Cannabis and cancer. Is there evidence that cannabis could become a new therapeutic agent for the management of brain cancer? I'm Dr. Thomas Hankey, medical doctor and expert cannabis physician. In this video, we'll be looking at malignant brain cancer gliomas and the evidence-based medical research addressing how effective cannabis is at fighting these tumors. Let's take a look. Cannabis and cancer. Brain cancer gliomas are the most prevalent type of adult brain tumors and are among the most malignant forms of cancer, resulting in the death of affected patients within months. Deadliest of all cancers that begin in the brain, they claim the lives of over 200,000 people each year. They are also the hardest to treat. Current therapeutic treatments are only palliative, such as immunotherapy, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and surgical removal. So, is there any possibility there could be another, more effective therapeutic alternative? The name of this research article is Anti-Tumoral Action of Cannabinoids, Involvement of Sustained Ceramide Accumulation and Extracellular Signal Regulated Kinase Activation. And it may have an answer. I'll be using simple language to discuss the main points of this study. And there will be a link to it with this video. I'll cover the purpose of this study, how it was designed, any limitations, potential bias, and statistical analysis of the study, followed with possible implications and how this may contribute to the medical field and lastly, a question for the audience. Let's begin. In year 2000, Ishmael Galvez Roper and Cristina Sanchez et al. Complutense University of Madrid conducted research on cannabis and cancer. Their primary focus was to understand if cannabis could treat brain cancer and serve as a potential therapeutic alternative. The study was designed using Wistar rats with malignant glioma brain cancer. The objective was to determine if THC, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, as well as a much more potent synthetic analog of THC, when 55 to 12-2, would be successful in eliminating the brain cancer from these rats. Let's just call it WIN-55. They also designed the research to determine any potential side effects and to analyze the cellular signaling cascade responsible for the death of any malignant cancer cells triggered by the cannabinoid receptor. So how was this study designed? The study was carried out by inducing malignant brain tumors through intracerebral injection of C6 glioma cells into 45 Wistar rats. Next, they separated the 45 Wistar rats with new brain tumors into three groups, 15 rats in each group. 15 rats received no treatment. 15 rats were treated with THC, and 15 rats were treated with the more potent synthetic analog WIN-55-12-2. WIN-55. This more potent synthetic cannabinoid ligand, or receptor activator, only required to be used at 10% of the THC dosage, which would help produce less substantial side effects. The two groups treated with cannabinoids received them on day 12, and were treated for a 7-day period. The results. Well, all of the rats left untreated uniformly died. 12 to 18 days after glioma cell inoculation, also known as injected with malignant brain cancer cells. To test the anti-tumoral effects of cannabinoids, 12 days after cell injection, they placed an osmotic pump delivering THC, or WIN-55, for a duration of 7 days, connected to a brain infusion cannula placed at the site of tumor inoculation. Both groups of cannabinoid-treated rats survived significantly longer than the control rats who received no treatment. T 
THC was ineffective in three rats, which died by day 16 to 19. Nine of the THC-treated rats surpassed the time of death of untreated rats and survived up to 19 to 35 days. Lastly, the tumor was completely eradicated in three of the THC-treated rats. Likewise, administration of Win-55 was ineffective in six rats, which died by days 15 to 18. It increased the survival time of four rats, up to 19 to 43 days, and completely eradicated the tumor in five rats. There was no recurrence in any of the eight surviving rats, which were monitored periodically by MRI. They performed a careful analysis through the MRI of these cannabinoid-cured, tumor-free rats, which showed no signs of damage related to necrosis, edema, infection, or trauma. An MRI of one of the THC-treated rats showed that after cannabinoid administration, there was a total absence of tumor mass. To rule out the possibility that cannabinoids are toxic to normal dividing neural cells, they used a type of cellular staining called tunnel staining of the subventricular zone of rat brain, which undergoes continued proliferation in adulthood. Cannabinoid administration did not induce any substantial apoptotic effect, also known as cellular death, to these normal non-tumor brain tissues in vivo. They also examined other potential side effects of cannabinoid administration in both tumor-free and tumor-bearing rats. Cannabinoid administration induced no substantial change in behavioral parameters such as motor coordination or physical activity. Food and water intake as well as body weight gain were unaffected during and after a cannabinoid delivery. Also, the hematologic profiles of cannabinoid-treated rats were normal. Neither biochemical parameters, glucose, urea, uric acid, creatinine, cholesterol, or bilirubin, nor markers of tissue damage, alanine and aspartate aminotransferases, gamma glutamyl transferase, creatinine kinase, and lactate dehydrogenase, changed substantially during the seven-day delivery, or for at least two months after cannabinoid treatment ended. So what's the summary here? Basically, Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, the main active component of marijuana, induces apoptosis of transformed neural cells, and intratumoral administration of THC and the synthetic cannabinoid induced a considerable regression of malignant gliomas in Wistar rats. Tumor-bearing rats treated with cannabinoids lived significantly longer than those without treatment. Eight of the cannabinoid-treated rats had complete resolution of tumor mass and no recurrence. Cannabinoid treatment did not produce any substantial neurotoxic effects and showed no signs of damage related to necrosis, edema, infection, or trauma. These results may provide the basis for a new therapeutic approach for the treatment of malignant gliomas. Limitations or potential bias in statistical analysis of data. Hmm. Limitations of this clinical study were the N number, 45. Obviously, the study would be much more powerful if they had used 45,000 rats, the single seven-day dosing regimen timeline, and the age of the study, 22. Survival data of the tumor-bearing rats were presented as a Kaplan-Meier plot and the log rank test was applied for statistical analysis with the resulting p-values of p less than 0.01, which obviously shows their results are indeed statistically significant. A possible bias for the study is a potential sampling bias, as all the rats included in the study were male. So, what are the, some possible implications? What does this mean? How does this contribute to the medical field? Well, in my own opinion, C6 gliomas in rats resemble glioblastomas, the most aggressive and deadliest brain cancer in humans. I believe the possible implications of this research 
show promising results that cannabinoids, including THC and CBD, could have a substantial role as a powerful therapeutic alternative for the treatment of malignant gliomas in humans. More powerful studies will obviously be needed to assess the true efficacy and safety profile before any clinical trials, but the data shown here today gives me hope as a physician that there might be an alternative to all the unbearable treatments of chemotherapy and radiation for cancer patients. I think it's time to reach out to Congress and ask their help to expedite further clinical research on this topic. If you would like to review this article, I've attached a link for reference to this video. So, do you think it's time for the United States to carry out such clinical trials? Or do you think we need more preclinical evidence? Please, let me know what you think about cannabis and cancer in the comments, along with any thoughts or additional research you'd like me to review. I'll be discussing more cannabis research and the effects it has on dozens of medical conditions in each new video. If you enjoyed watching this video, which I'm guessing you did because you stayed all the way to the end and you want to find out when my next video is released, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. It really helps out the video, helps more people find the video, and helps my channel reach more people. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Dr. Thomas Hankey. I hope you're having an amazing week. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep an open mind.